It's been a few days, but it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, my brain is kind of getting reacclimated to the game state. Um, I find that when I when I play a, a, a game like this day in, day in and day out, if I just take a day or two off, my brain's kind of wiped clean and it takes a while to kind of reintegrate. But it's all coming back to me. Um, I don't think it should be too bumpy, but I don't I don't have um, kind of in temporary memory stored what everyone was going to do. So it might be a bit chunkier of play, but if you bear with me, I think you'll find that some exciting things are happening. For example, the Dutch. Yes, that's right. There are Dutch Dutch folk um, on the board now, and they are courtesy of Runt right here. Jumped right into um, the Roman Empire, I guess. The Dutch popped up um, and caused the swordsmen there to flee. So there was a swords fellow there, and the Dutch were able to steal a bit of science from the Romans. So now they even have a, I think, a scientific advantage compared to the Romans. I think that was the only science the Romans had. So um, Run's doing kind of a similar thing. It looks like that she that she did before with the Finns. Um, just kind of created an empire right in the middle of their empire and just like deal with it. She's kind of in a in a nice position being being the leader and really not having to worry so much about her spot. In the midst of the trade and progress phase, we didn't have much production. Um, big things that are going on with that, I think everyone, well, no, Flush didn't do any trading, but everyone else did some trading. Cowboys Phoenicians are... are quickly progressing, as are, the, are giraffes harappans. They're kind of racing. Um, since Cowboy has the science uh, advantage, though, he's going a little bit faster. It's close, though. The harappans have have quite a bit of science now. I should actually calculate it um, at the end of this turn. I think they might have gotten a card last time. It was a few days ago that I actually selected their culture cards. Um, but it's fun to do it. I, I, I'm enjoying using this dice system because the cards are changing hands a lot more and um, yeah, so it, it, it makes it more interesting. Um, I also like thinking about who's going to trade with who and why. Um, so in this case, the Phoenicians, they traded with the Romans, which kind of helped Giraffe as a player, but having a stronger Romans is better for Cowboy because they can kind of hurt the hurt primarily Melkies, I guess. That's that's Cowboys. Cowboy kind of has two big rivals right now, Melky, who's ahead of him, and uh, Flush, who's behind him, trying to catch up. So um, the Rappins, uh, for their part, they traded with the um, Siamese over here, which is Flush's character, Flush's guy, which is helpful for her um, to make him stronger because he's going against Cowboy, and Cowboy. Um, Cowboy has the Phoenicians who are competing with the Harappans for progress. So she wants bad things to happen to Cowboy currently. Um, any other interesting trading stuff? Oh yeah, there was a, a trade between the English and the uh, Plains Indians here, which was kind of cool. Um, so that's Melky helping out uh, Cowboy to kind of to, to compete with Runt over here. With the help of several cards, a barrage card, a route card, and a charge card, um, Flesh's Ming have all but decimated the Han. The Han have a few scant spaces left. One, two, three, and then a little little peninsula over here called Korea. Um, yeah, pretty pretty vicious battles. Um, it's been, it was really really tough on Cowboy at one point. He charged in with this knight. It was double strength. And cowboys, two, he had a swordsman and I think an archer or something there. They tried to run away, but then they got routed, and so they just died instead. Pretty vicious. There's also going to be a cost, uh, thanks to um, cowboy having a little bit more dice than... Or no, flush, I'm sorry. Having a little bit more dice than cowboy at the end, so... He can hurt the Han even more. Though I don't think the Han actually have anything. Never mind. He can't really hurt them anymore. Yeah, there. See, their money's there. Yeah, they don't have any cards. No, he can't hurt them. The place is what will someday become Mexico. What's going down is a showdown in Silver Country between Attican the Mouse uh, and Sir Bodkin the Prudent. They are both um, Plains Americans here. And they are attacking Enrak the Fury in 
Silver Country. It's funny, I, I just pulled that Silver Country out randomly, but I think it fits, fits the place. Okay, we've done a few moves, and here's the situation so far. So, Enric the Fury um, is a tough guy, right? He's, he's the Fury, a berserker, and Attigan the Mouse has a gun. But Enric doesn't really know that, but he does know that Attigan the Mouse has a couple items. Sir Budkin the Prudent is a kind of a blocker, can get in the way, but can't really do a lot other than that. Though he did help Attigan find Enric in the first place. Um, so Enric's trying to get from here over to here. Um, these two are trying to kill him, basically. And so they're kind of dancing around. Uh, Runt's trying to have him be cagey, but she's in a tough position. If she can get into melee, that might work all right for her, but Attigan could beat Enrak in melee as well, especially if he has Sir Bodkin the Prudent to help. All right, and here we are at kind of the moment of truth, I guess. We're going to see what's going to happen. They've danced around for a while. Now Enrak's here um, within range of Attigan. Part of the reason that Attigan let that happen is Attigan's gun is only a range of six, so uh, he kind of did a little thing where he went back down here, went under the tunnel, went that way, and they kind of split this way. Bodikin's over here to kind of annoy him if he tries to go back up again, and Adigan's over here to hopefully get a shot at him, and I think he will, because Enrak the Fury is going to charge Adigan the Mouse. Runt. Uh, he's kind of actually key to Runt. Um, Enrak the Fury, she'd really like him to survive, but she's hoping he can survive whatever a attack happens and make it out next turn. He's a builder. Uh, her Aztecs, or I forget what they are, are they Aztecs? Um, yeah, her Aztecs, they score on making buildings, and the builder will make that easier. So let's see if he survives in order to build. So we got a gun here, it's a gyro needler, not the strongest gun, but Adigan's a decent shot. So we have green against green. And that's a nine, so Adigan misses, that's unfortunate. And now they are gonna have a melee, yellow against yellow. It's a seven, that's gonna be a hit. Red against blue. And that's a six, that is a squeak. And so that's not going to be enough to damage. Adigan can fight back. White against yellow. Seven is a hit. And then damage is pretty decent. He's got a little mouse sword. Green against blue. That's damage. So he's going to be hurt for one. And it's going to be their turn. All right. Cowboy's giving himself another shot. He moved Adigan back there. Um, Enrak's going to have to get past him again in order to get out the other side. So, yeah, he's going to do it in two, three. I'm just remembering that he's hurt for one. Okay, so we're going to get have another shot at the gun. And this time it hit. So, that's going to be blue against blue. And unfortunately, no penetration there. Um, so, fight back. Yellow against yellow. That's a miss for Interactive Fury. White against yellow. That is a hit. Yep. And damage is green against blue. Green against blue. Nope. No damage there. So it's going to be their turn again. I don't think they're going to be able to block anymore. I get, uh, no, actually, yeah, he can block. He's just going to go here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Bodkin's about caught up. Um, and Enrak's hurt for one. I guess he's going to have to do this again. There's not going to be a chance to shoot with the gun this time because it's only one space away, and we're just going to roll some more dice. And that's a miss. White against yellow. That's another miss. Okay, so they can't really stop him anymore. He's gonna. I, we're going to say he escapes, but he's injured. So we are down to our civilized phase. A couple interesting things happened. First one was our flush. He um, tried to cause this river here to flood in North America in order to bother, um, in order to bother Cowboy some. But Cowboy had a, car, uh, a reversal card, which let him do it to the Ming. Um, so a little bit of karma for the Ming for bopping down the, the Han there. Um, flush followed that up by doing a few plays that 
one that hurt the, the Han further, and then a couple more that got him just some points for kind of some inconsequential artifacts. Um, after that, Milky, his assassins finally got a card that gave him some wreaths, so they're able to, to, to actually assassinate. So he got a couple points off that. He killed John McGiddy, which was a Harappan leader, and then also Adigan the mouse. He killed that mouse. Um, I think to he he could rationalize it because the mouse was running around with a laser gun trying to shoot a poor uh, defenseless berserker. And as you're probably familiar with by now, we've done our scoring and our progressing. I just didn't do the progressing. There we go. Um, he gets these musket men. Um, pretty pretty big scoring round for Flush. He got the expanded glory card. Uh, which led him up his his glory to 13, which is pretty pretty good. He's still a long ways away from Cowboy, and um, Cowboy's Phoenicians are really just cruising along there. They're kind of untouchable too. There's not really anything he can do about it, other than try to score more. Um, he's scoring decent though. The Japanese they have a good hold on things. Um, they you know they have the oceans right now until someone else takes to the water. Um, what else do they have? They have money, and they have their homeland, and they have wheat. If they can get some more wheat, you know, it's he's really just got to outscore Cowboy. Cowboy is beating him back, though. He, his Plains Americans, they they expanded. Um, that's going to make it hard for, for Flush to beat him, I think, uh, because that's really his point cow. Uh, Phoenicians pulled two, Hans pulling one. Hans are not going to be around for much longer, but then that's just going to free Cowboy up. To, to get another score. I, I don't think Flesh is going to be able to pull it off this time. Um, though I guess I said that before, it was closer before. This is just, this is too big of a difference. I guess he could get super lucky in his cards. Maybe he could get it, he doesn't have any hand right now, but if he got the Grand Vizier, he could play that and grab this card uh, and use it again. <laughs> but even then, you know, Cow Cowboy's going to get like six points maybe. That's going to put him up here, you know, even if he gets another 13, it's going to take a while, especially if he's if he's progressing like three a turn, that's like one, two, three, one, two, you know, that's two turns and flesh is gone. That's, that's what's going to happen, I think. Next time, not next time, the time after, next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.